Hello, my name is Dominique Azel Massieu. I work for an organization called the World Wide Web Consortium, or WCC for short. I'm here to introduce today one of our exciting projects, which I hope to be of high relevance to the Laval virtual audience, called the Immersive Web. Uh, let me first tell you what WCC is. Uh, we are a non-profit international organization, a consortium set with a mission to make the web uh, grow through the development of technical standards. Um, WCC was funded and is uh, directed by the inventor of the web, Tim Berners-Lee, whose picture you can see uh, right above me, to ensure the continuous harmonious growth of his invention, the web. WCC is a forum where are technologies that make it possible to build and run web pages and web applications in web browsers are designed and standardized. You might have heard of HTML5, CSS, or JavaScript, for example. This means the technologies we develop in WCC end up on the devices of more than 4 billion people today, uh, approximately. So the standards we build are made available freely to everyone and are developed in the open by a community of contributors who come from more than 450 organizations that are members of uh, WCC as a consortium. And these members come from all over the world. Any organization can join uh, WCC and typically organizations join the consortium to make sure that their use cases, their requirements are properly addressed by the technical standard we build. Uh, the work of the consortium is supported by a full-time staff of around um, 60 people located in Europe, in the United States, in China and in Japan. I too belong to that staff. I'm based in the southeast of France. And among my responsibility in WCC, I've been looking at the intersections of uh, web and AR and VR, or uh, XR for short. You might say that's not the most obvious intersection. What is the relationship between a web browser and a VR or AR experience? Well, I'm probably biased, but in my perspective, there are in fact lots of not only interesting intersections, but also complementarity between the two worlds. In WCC, we call the open web platforms a set of technologies that are available in web browsers. Uh, they indeed provide a platform to develop and deploy applications, and we all use them in our daily life. And when you look at it for content and service providers, um, this technology offers the most widely deployed uh, platform. As I said, it's directly available in the hands of more than 4 billion users today and on devices ranging from uh, desktop PC to mobile phones, gaming consoles, and in practice, pretty much any connected devices nowadays. It also helps in terms of content and service providers that the platform has the biggest uh, developers community available with estimates ranging from 20 to 40 million developers able to code for uh, web pages, web applications. And from my perspective, one of the most magical aspect of the web, one of the most interesting of the web as a platform is how low friction it is what I mean by that is that any web page, any web application that you can think of is available just at the end of a link, uh, just a click or a tap away from your preferred sense engine or from your preferred social network. It's really easy to get into uh, a web application. You just have to, to follow a link. And all of this magic, all of this goodness is available through standards that are well-defined, uh, interoperable, and available freely to anyone, both to use as an end user and to use as a developer, and also open to anyone to help uh, define. As I said, WCC is an organization that anyone can join to help define the, the future of web standards. And I think all of these characteristics make the web a very compelling platform for AR and VR. Many of you will know, will have had the experience that one of the persistent challenge for XR experiences is that they 
can necessitate a lot of uh, engagement from end users because they have to overcome a lot of potential friction. Uh, they need to get geared up with their headsets, they need to have their controllers, they need to have their uh, uh, detector set up if needed. Uh, and that can make a lot of uh, friction before you even get started. And, and what that means in practice is that by the time uh, the user is geared up, half of your audience will have given up for lack of time of, or of engagement. Um, one other challenge is that it's typically difficult to find developers that can do uh, XR development. Um, and, and the toolkits that are, are made available are often either specific to a specific operating system, a specific hardware, and in most cases, they will be specific to either VR or AR, which means uh, multiple developments if you want to target both mediums. And, and that's where I think the wide availability of web technologies, of web developers, uh, makes the web very appealing. Uh, they also bring a very low friction entrance uh, to any XR experience. And because they are cross-platform, uh, they also overcome some of the challenges around uh, multiple developments for uh, a single product. So the, the web packages a number of features that makes, I think, a very uh, compelling story to overcome some of the traditional challenges from, from XR. And so in the LCC, we call this vision of bringing uh, the good aspect of the web with the good aspect of uh, anything uh, XR. We call that the immersive web. Um, and the specific uh, target here is to make uh, web browsers a platform to develop and distribute AR and VR experience to any device using uh, web technologies. Now you might say, wait a minute, distribute XR content to any device, but not all devices are XR capable. That doesn't quite make sense. Uh, what does it mean to experience XR content if the user isn't equipped for it? The, the interesting aspect is the web has been dealing with that question for pretty much ever. Uh, there has always been a wide variety of screen sizes when the the internet was mostly on PCs and mobile came. And so we had a wide variety of interactions and screen types and so on. And so the, the web developer community has this strong culture of deplo deploying and de developing content that will adapt itself uh, to a variety of hardware capabilities. And so the vision here is that by reusing the same approach, the same ideas, we can build content that will work on any device, XR content that will work on any device, but will take advantage of the full immersive experience for users that have the re required hardware. Uh, and so this approach is traditionally called uh, progressive enhancement on the web. And the rough idea is that you, know, you build your XR content, which will be presented as 2D content that you would interact through either uh, a touch or the mouse on a traditional uh, laptop or on a mobile. You could also use the so-called magic window mode. Uh, for VR or AR content on a mobile. And if the user has a full uh, VR or AR headset, then they get the more immersive experience by uh, using the, the headset. But the, the idea remains that you develop the content once and depending on the hardware and the capabilities available, it will adapt itself to what the user can uh, experience as the best experience. And, and when I say by BEX experience, it's not just whether the user has the required hardware or not. You may have the you know, most fancy hardware available. If you're not in a position, either uh, from a time perspective or a social perspective, to using it, well, then it's great that you can still fall back to a, a less immersive but still functional approach to, to experience XR content. And that also means that it's often very expensive to build an XR content, an XR application, 
Um, and by expanding the number of users that can uh, benefit from it automatically, you actually reduce the cost by uh, spreading it over a, a bigger audience. So that's the vision. The way we achieve that vision is through a technology under standardization in DLCC called uh, WebXR. Uh, more specifically, WebXR is an API that developer can use to detect and plug into XR devices when they are available to create and adapt their web content to, to the hardware and to make that content react to the user's position, the user's movement, um, and as well to display it on the right uh, display, uh, for instance, on their headset. Uh, if you look at what we have in our uh, standard, in, in our specification today, WebXR has a fairly complete support for anything uh, VR. Some of you might have heard about WebVR, which was a predecessor technology. WebXR uh, replaced it completely by providing a more structured uh, platform for, for VR content. Uh, it also includes uh, support for AR and VR controllers. And we also have some of the basic primitives for AR provided by uh, WebXR. It's only for simple AR experiences at the moment, but it already lets uh, developers uh, get a feel of what WebXR will be useful for AR in the near future. And I'm talking here as WCC, but the reason WebXR matters is not because of WCC, as much as all the momentum that it has from some of the key stakeholders in the industry, just to name a few of the organizations that are very actively involved uh, in the development of the, of the standard, uh, Google, Facebook with Oculus, Apple, Microsoft, Samsung, Mozilla, Magic Leap, all of these companies are very actively involved in the work, uh, both to actually define the standard, the specification, and also implement it and ship it in their products. So, if this vision of the immersive web is interesting and you want to get a better feel of what it is useful for, um, the good news is that it's actually already uh, shipping in a, a number of uh, widely deployed browsers. In particular, the VR part of the specification is available in Chrome, in the Magic Leap Helios browser, in the Oculus browser as well, and will be shipping very soon in uh, Firefox and Samsung Internet. The AR part uh, is already available as well in Chrome and Magic Leap, and we expect it to ship in more browsers very soon as well. Uh, from a developer perspective, many of you will be using existing frameworks to develop their XR content, and a number of these frameworks have already started to adopt WebXR as a as part of their workflow of their tool chain. So it's also fairly easy to get started uh, thanks to that integration point. So uh, as I said right now, the AR capabilities are fairly limited in WebXR. They are fairly basic, but of course, we are very actively working in improving that situation. Uh, there is uh, a lot of active work uh, on making them richer, in particular to have all of the primitives needed to uh, bring real world detection and interaction. We're also starting to look at how to bring hand input uh, for both VR and AR. Uh, it's something that has started to appear in several uh, headsets. And more generally speaking, we're looking at more integration points between uh, existing web content and AR and VR spaces so that you can bring one into the other uh, more easily. Um, in general, uh, we have plenty of ideas. Uh, we have lots of people very excited about the potential of what the web can bring to, to XR. What we sometimes miss is uh, people to make that vision true. So if you're uh, in, interested, not just in using WebXR, but in uh, helping shape it, uh, please get involved. As I said, uh, the LCC is open to anyone to join. The work we do is completely in the open, so you can even look at how we work today without uh, any um, uh, 
prior engagement. And um, if you want to make sure that the work we are doing, the priorities we put on the work we are doing match your needs, your use cases, your requirements, I would very strongly encourage you to actually join uh, WCC, become a member, become a participant in the immersive web uh, group. And if you need any help uh, to do that, any help in understanding the immersive web, WCC, the work we do in general, feel free to contact me. I'm available by email at domaldelfi.org. I'm also available on Twitter, on GitHub as uh, Don't Call Me Dom. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, virtual event. And I hope to uh, get uh, a lot of feedback from uh, you all. Thank you.